Somebody say, God is a good God. God, a good God. Amen. And we've been teaching on, let's go ahead and look at our, our, our master text uh, from this teaching. And um, Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 19 and 20, we're teaching on overcoming hindrances to hearing from God. Everybody say, overcoming hindrances to hearing from God. See, we want, we want to walk in a place where we're unencumbered. I know that's probably a, 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 we're not encumbered. How about that? Yeah, we better go that way. You know, the Bible says lay aside the weight and the sins that do so easily beset us. You know, so there are sins will beset you, but you know, weights will too. Every, everybody say that. Weights will beset me. Now, apparently, weights weren't sin. Because when Paul wrote that, he said, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that do we so easily beset us. So what are weights? Things that encumber us, things that, that hold us back, things that are, that, are, that are pulling us that are not sin. They're just things in our life that we haven't, uh, we haven't gotten free from or overcome that hold us back. And so uh, we, we started uh, sh sharing at the beginning of January on overcoming hindrances to hearing from God. Um, you know, I, Ezekiel says in Ezekiel 11, 19 says in verse 20 also, and I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take out the stony heart of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk, listen, that they may. In other words, God's going to take out the stony heart, put in a heart of flesh, put a new spirit with them in order to empower them to too. You know, when he says that they, that's empower you too. In Bible speak. In other words, he's going to empower us to what? Walk in his statutes, keep his ordinances, and do them. <laughs> now we spent some time on that back at the beginning. Let's go back and look at this one through it. I just can't do it. God said there's a spirit in you that empowers you too. Now, the New Testament term for that is, are you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess with some folk this morning. How do, I like messing with people on the internet. Hallelujah. Strengthening grace. Grace is not just undeserved, unmerited. I know that's what the concordance says, but you know, if you take that concordance definition, go stick it there where the word grace is used, you you'll mess the Bible up. You won't even make sense what you're saying. Yeah. Let's take Paul when he's talking about the thorn. He said, you know, my grace is sufficient for thee. My undeserved, unmerited favor is sufficient for you. For when in your weakness, I'm, you know, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. How does unmerited, undeserved favor make sense in the middle of a battle? It doesn't. No, strengthening. He's strengthening grace. Grace that strengthens makes sense in that place. So you've got to take context. You've got to take the context. You just can't, listen, you know, if you look at the Bible, <laughs> How oh boy, we're going to do a Bible lesson here. We're going to do an exegesis lesson. We're going to do a Bible on Bible interpretation. A lesson on Bible interpretation real quick. When they, when they, when they study the Bible, they go back, and like, like the Greek words, they'll study how it was used in classical Greek. In other words, how it was used in that setting of the era. Then they'll take it, and they'll study how the, the translators of the Septuagint used that word to translate a Hebrew word. You know, they, what, what, what word they chose from the classical Greek to translate a Hebrew word. And then so you look at the Hebrew meaning and compare it to how that, the Greek word was used. And, you, and, you, and yeah, that changes the flavor or the, somewhat the meaning of the word sometimes. And then you see how the New Testament writers use that same word in the New Testament in the context. Um, <clears throat> for example, the word agape that Jesus used did not mean the undeserved, I mean, um, the un, um, uh, <laughs> unconditional love of God until Jesus used it. <coughs> Jesus transformed the meaning of that word into the, un, the, um, the <laughs> I've tried, I got grace in my head. I'm trying to keep using that definition. Hallelujah. Unconditional, unconditional love of God. I want to say unmerited. That, that, that grace thing's running around in my head. Unconditional love of God until Jesus used it. That's not what it meant. But when Jesus used it, it transformed the meaning. And so from then on, we say that, God, that agape means the unconditional love of God. Amen. So the same thing is true with like words like grace, chris, meaning a gift. It simply meant a gift. And then we came up with favor, the gift of favor. And we kind of keep, you see. But here, like a, when talking about Paul's thorn, it's really talking about strength. My strength is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Or you could translate it this way, my strength is perfect for you, for my grace is made perfect in weakness. Yeah. All right? 
Well, here, there is a grace that God gives us to empower us. There is empowering grace. God says he's going to put a new spirit within you that will empower you. Let me say this. Anything God says you can do, you can do. Anything. Let me take it another step further. Anything God tells you to do, you can do. I just can't get free. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And then when Jesus sets you free, honey, he sets you free. It's a matter of you choosing to walk in it and access his grace to do those things. Amen. So he says he's going to take out that stony heart, put in a heart of flesh, and that, that they, or in order to, or be, because of this, you will walk in my statutes, keep my ordinances, and do them. And they shall be my people, I will be their God. Okay. And then Jesus said, John 10, 27, my sheep know my, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Bill, you getting the cramp there yet, brother? Hallelujah. <laughs> Jeremiah 33 says, 33, 3 says, call unto me, and I will answer for thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things, or great and hidden things which thou knowest not. So here we have God telling us he's going to commune with us, he's going to speak with us, he's going to fellowship with us, he's going to establish us in a way that we can walk and do what he said to do. Amen. Yeah. Then why aren't people doing it? Well, we said this earlier, there are hindrances to hearing from God. The first one we went across was carnality. Enough said. Go back and listen to the tapes. Excuse me, That's, I'm so old school. <laughs> Apes. That is so old school. <laughs> we don't even say buy the DVD or the CDs anymore. Just go listen to them offline. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go re rehearse these electronically. Eventually, they probably want to have that. I saw the other day they're, they're figuring out how to store data in human DNA. Yep. They're actually learning, they're figuring out how to take DNA, strands of DNA, and, and they recovered the stuff they put in. They put Martin Luther King's speech in there, put a couple of things in there, and recovered it with 99.9% .9 accuracy. And you're going, how'd they do that? I don't know. That's out beyond me. <laughs> I'm telling you, storing data in human DNA. Man, wouldn't that be great? Put the whole language vocabulary of a foreign language in your DNA in your head, man. Instantly speak another language. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Some of you think, I don't want them putting stuff in my head. <laughs> well, I was on the cool side until I thought about the repercussions. All right. So carnality, uh, go back and listen to that on Roku, on, this, on streaming, download video. Disobedience, we just finished that last week. Yep. You know, talking about disobedience or get you in trouble. Let's get to the last one. And this one, I think, more people deal with than they realize. I say the best for last. All right? Discouragement. I believe more people can't hear from God because they are discouraged than anything else. They shut down. When you become discouraged, you lose hope, and, and you can't hear. Then I'm, we're going to read from 1 Kings chapter 19, the entire chapter. Okay? Why are you going to read the whole chapter? Because you need to hear it. All right. All right. Now, let's, let's give a little back uh, story to 1 Kings chapter 19, like 1 Kings chapter 18. <laughs> All right? We're not going to read there, but I'm just going to kind of bring you up. So you've heard the story. <clears throat> um, Elijah showed up one day and had a discussion with the prophets of Baal about whose God was God. And uh, so there was a challenge issued that the God who answered by fire, he is God. And so Elijah, knowing his God, knowing his God was the God, the true God, the living God, said, okay, you guys go first. And so he gave them about a week, and they went out there, and they put their sacrifices up, and they cut, and they, I mean, they cut themselves, and they cried out to God. He sat over there and mocked them, is your God on vacation? Is he in the bathroom? I mean, he just kind of sat over there and mocked them. They just kept going, and, you know, waiting, 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 waiting for their God to answer by fire. And finally, he had and said, okay, boys, out of the way. Now, look, we're just going to make this test a little bit stronger. We're going to bring in a, a bunch of barrels of water, and we're going to pour it on the sacrifice. We're going to pour it on the altar, and you're going to have so much of the trench around it. It's just water sitting there. And he got in and prayed about a five-minute prayer. God, the lightning came out of heaven. The Bible says, licked up. And, I mean, and everything was gone. I mean, it's like that beam me up Scotty happened. I mean, the lightning hit it, took up the sacrifice, the rocks, the wood, the water, everything, wiped the, the whole thing. Guess whose God was God? God is God. And God don't ever change. I know my God is God. Yeah. 
You guys need to learn that. Anyway, do some camp meeting stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I know that they're going, oh, my God. <laughs> That's four tempos faster than what we do. Okay. But we believe it's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Not that what you don't do is good. I just like, I like that camp meeting stuff, too. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You guys cool? Y'all are cool? Okay. All right. Just don't want to offend anybody right in the middle of right beginning of my sermon. <laughs> they don't hear another thing I said. Hallelujah. You get discouraged about discouragement. Hallelujah. And so he gets up, and it's 450 of their prophets. He turns into Bruce Lee. What? I mean, kills all of them. 450 by himself with the anointing. See, the anointing will turn you into a different man or a different woman. And let me say something. One of the things that happens in our life is that when, we, it, when we've been under the anointing and when we're not under that anointing, we fail to remember that it's available. Yeah. Amen. Which is what happened to Elijah. Elijah kills all 450. He's got to be feeling pretty doggone good about himself. I mean, you know what I'm saying? God just took out the whole offering thing with, with one lightning bolt. I mean, he kills all 450 prophets. And then some little harlot sends a message to him. Yeah, right. Are you here? Yeah. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This is a woman with gumption. Oh, my. Or got a devil one. What idiot? After you, somebody comes to you and says, hey, we did this whole offering thing. Elijah's God sent down one lightning bolt, took out the whole thing, and then he killed all 400 prophets, 450 prophets, you know, your prophets, single-handedly by himself. Yeah. And instead of her going, oh, brother, I better cut down, she goes, he, all Elijah done, how he slain all the prophets of the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. Yeah. <laughs> Are you brain dead, lady? Yeah. This guy's God is God. But here's what happened. See, Satan will come right behind a great victory and try to rob you of it. One minute, you got all the money you could think of. The next minute, he's sending a bill you didn't expect. Hello? Come on now. I mean, one minute, you know, everything's just hunk of door. Next minute, there's a report. Now, I'm going to tell on ourselves. Last night, Nathan had some stuff set on the couch from school. And I look over there, and I said, oh, my goodness. I pick it up and show it to Janie. She said, what in the world? And I look at the, 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 it's, it's some English work he had done. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and on the top of it, it's got an F. Oh. And I'm like calling him. He's upstairs in the voters room. He had the door shut. And I'm because I didn't want to walk over there and tell him to come down. I was comfortable. I had the dog in between my legs. She was Finally, I had to get it. Go knock on the wall and say, Nathan, come down here. He comes down there. I said, son, is there something you want to tell us about your English? He said, what you talking about? And I held that up to him. He went, that's the section, not the grade. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes, that's exactly what we said. He said, he says, it's got a check. I said, A minus. I said, get back upstairs. <laughs> I mean, because he had forgotten on his, where his name and his course number was to put the section he was in. And he's in section F. <laughs> and right, it's right on the very front top, you know. I'm using the F. <laughs> what would you think? Don't you go, what were you thinking, Pastor? You were thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, that's a section. I'm like... You've got to be kidding. Because I was sitting there telling Jane, I said, that's a little stiff. I mean, I'm looking at the stuff she had written. That's stiff. An F for this? No one has a chance. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Nicholas Sparks flunks out. Oh, hallelujah. You know, and, and see, things are going so good. You think, man, goodness, he just, you know, uh, right now we're waiting to hear his last grade to see if he, he, he made Dean list or not. He's close. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what he's got on his last, that, that incomplete he had to do because of the, the singing thing. But he's done that, and we're waiting for that grade to come in. He made Dean, we're talking about, here's a victory. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dean's list are right at it. It's a victory. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I could take your joy in a heartbeat. Are you here? 
as a parent. Well, Elijah had just had this major victory. And then the harlot said, I'm going to do you what you did to them. And, and I love this because, you know, this is God, God takes, we better, we better start, we're, gonna, we're just changing. We're going to go back to some stuff we used to do. And we're going to act like we used to act because we're going to get a hold of what we used to have a hold of as of individuals and as a church. You got to watch what you say. She said, let the gods do to me if I don't do it to you. Go read 1 Kings chapter 9 or 2 Kings chapter 9. Now, Elijah didn't get to get in on the party, but Elisha did. And the word of the Lord was that when she dies, there won't be anything of her to bury. The dogs eat it. And when the, the guys threw her out the window, the dogs came and ate. The only thing that was left was the palm of her hands and her head, her skull. You better watch what you say, especially when you mess with God's folk. Hallelujah. And, uh, and when he saw that, he arose. Listen to this. Yesterday, he killed 450 people by himself. He went for his life. What? He's discouraged. Yeah. He's discouraged. Jezebel said something. <laughs> and now he's discouraged. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's out from under the anointing, and he failed to understand that that anointing remains available to keep you in victory. That the God who put that anointing on him to kill the prophets is the same God that will protect and spare his life. Yeah, go. That's good. Amen. And so you can come out of a victory, and in, 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 the, down, in, in the coming down of that victory, Satan will always try to show up and rob the, the experience of that victory from you so that you can become discouraged. And that's exactly what happened to Elijah. And when he saw he rose, went for his life, came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested, for, listen to this, and he requested for himself that he might die. <laughs> now, hey, I'm telling you, that's pretty doggone discouraged. Matter of fact, he's gone from discouragement to depression. Quit that quick. I said that quick. He's gone from discouragement into depression. Now, wait a second. Just a couple of days earlier, he's wiping out a whole slew of prophets by the hand of the Lord. Now he's ready to die. Yeah. See, we got to we got to guard ourselves. Can you say amen? amen. And, um, and listen to what he says. It's enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I'm not better than my father's. And the Lord said, you want some cheese to go with that wine. Anyway. Because you're whining too much. Oh, come on, guys. That's funny. And he, as he lay, he slept under a juniper tree. And behold, then an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. He did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel came again to the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for thee. Now, let me, uh, here's, here's, here is a metaphor here for the church, an allegory, that after a great victory, you need to go back and feed on the things of God. Because you need to be replenished in the faithfulness and the trueness and the authority of God's Word in your life. Amen. You, if you expend spiritual energy, you need to retank. Amen. <clears throat> now, hey, see, listen, this is, this is heaven food. This is, this is, this is symbolic. Right, right. Angel made him heavenly food. And so he ate of that and then said, take, eat it. If the journey's too great for you, you need, you need, you need, have, you need fresh food. You need fresh matter. You need fresh food from heaven. Can you say amen? amen. See, a lot of times we, <clears throat> after we've had victories and then the devil comes and starts robbing us of all those things, I'm telling you, it's so easy to get uh, just, just so busy with everything. Life, uh, fighting the battles. I'm going to tell you something. If you're in a battle that you're not winning and you don't have what you need to win it, forget it. Just go ahead and sit down somewhere and get fed, filled back up. Yeah, but if I do that, the world's going to fall apart. It's going to fall apart whether you do or don't. <laughs> At this point, you better, go to, you better go get tanked back up and get strength for the journey. If you don't get strength for the journey, you're not going to make it. You can, in, other words, in other words, it could fall apart and destroy you with it. 
We looked at some things yesterday, and we, I just looked at Janie and said, it's a miracle we made it last year. Yeah. I, just, I, looked, I said, I didn't know it was that bad. I said, it's just flat out, 100% a miracle we made it last year. I ain't figured it out yet. Have you? We don't, we don't know how it happened. We don't know how we made it last year as far as looking at numbers and stuff. We can't figure it out. I'm talking about personally. We can't figure out how we did it. I'm still trying to figure it out. And took care of the girls in Tulsa at the same time. I can't, we just can't figure it out. The numbers aren't there. When you look at paper, it ain't there. But it happened. And we're not behind and we didn't go under. Ha, 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 on the devil. Right. Somebody else said, ha, 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 on the devil. Ha, 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 on the devil. And my God's faithful. I like this. Even when you're not faithful, he's faithful. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. He's a faithful God. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, he said, the journey is too great for thee. He arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights under oil of the mount of God. Now, thank God. I'm telling you, you can get rejuvenated by the, by the things of God and you can go in the strength of that. How do, can you say amen? amen? Oh, thank God. I want you to know that when all is lost, when there is nothing in front of you, when everything's been taken out of you, there is something God can give you to strengthen you and to lift you up and to send you on your way to bring you to the place that he can speak to you and reestablish you and put you where you need to be. Yeah. Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he came thither to a, unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said unto him, this is what the Lord asked him. Now I'm going to say it in English. What are you doing here, boy? <laughs> what doest thou here, Elijah? I say, I say something. What you doing here? All right. And Elijah said, I been, listen, now he's going to lay his case out. <clears throat> this is why he's discouraged. I've been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. I mean, you think that 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10 is the foundation for the hee haw song. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I mean, it's got to be the same group that, that read this, went out and wrote that song. It's the gloom despair song. I mean, I'm the only one. Yeah, yeah, but it's, you're the only one. You took out 450 of their prophets. God had a miracle. Even if you are the only one, you're walking with God. But he forgot that because a whore spoke. Isn't that a strong word? No, that's what she was. The Bible called her a harlot. I mean, that's just, that's just King Jimmy for whore. I know y'all, the Bible calls, talks about the whore Babylon. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a bad word. Just when you just don't go around calling everybody that. But she was. <laughs> you just can't call everybody that because they're not. But she was. And she just spoke some little word to him. And he ran off and hid and was discouraged. And now he's depressed, wanting to die. And, and he said, go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And, the, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Now, I'm going to say something else while we're getting into this. When you're in the middle of discouragement and, and despair and in the middle of um, depression, quit looking for the big booming sound of God talking to you. You're going to miss it. He's not in the wind. And if you keep looking for it, the devil will send somebody your way to be your wind and give you a word that calls you to miss God. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. What? What does Pastor Hagen say? Don't miss the supernatural looking for the spectacular. We got people who are running around looking for a word, wanting to call up, dial a pastor or dial a prophet and get a word, wanting somebody to go to some meeting and somebody have a word for them. God's not in the wind. God is not in the earthquake. God is not in the fire. Hello? And after the fire, 
a still, small voice. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. You're looking all kinds of places and down on the inside, God's been talking all along. God's been speaking all along. Now, you may not want to accept it because you're being carnal or you're being disobedient. We go back to all three of them. But when you're in discouragement, you're going to have to stop looking for somebody to have something and look to what God's already given you. Amen? And it was so when Elijah heard it, <clears throat> he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood at the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, boy? Boy, I said, I said, Son, you're here again. What you doing here? All right. And he said, Here he goes again. God's, God has walked past him. There's wind, earthquake, fire, and the still small voice, and he's still whining. Yep. What doest thou here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, slain thy prophets with a sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return, on, what's what? get back to work. Yep. Go back and do what you're supposed to be doing. I will be, listen, you got to understand. There's understoods here. I will be just as faithful as I was before she spoke. I'm still the God that licked up the fire, uh, the altar. I am still the God that anointed you to slay all the prophets. I'm still God. I sit on the throne, hallelujah. I am the God of heaven and earth. Now you go and get back to work. You go do what I told you to do and stop messing around. You ain't got time for all this whining business. Hello? And so we, we try to get compassionate in our churches, and we try to have, you know, uh, uh, spiritual healing, and, you know, and, and which is just a bunch of psychology mixed in with, with, with the Bible and messes people up. Because we're, we're going to talk about their mama and who done them wrong and all this kind of stuff. It don't matter. You're so mean. Oh, quit it. Grow up. You're being harsh. No, I'm not. It's just time to stop playing games and, and whining about who done you wrong back in the third grade mm -hmm. and letting that control your life. I am telling you, you, you think I'm joking, but there, there, about 10 years ago I saw an article where men were having problems in life because they were still suffering from the trauma of their circumcision at eight days old. And they paid that idiot to tell them that stupid stuff. I'm suffering because I was circumcised at eight days. I don't remember eight days old. <laughs> and you don't either. And paying some dingbat to tell you that you do is not very smart. Just bring your time to the Lord and give it to the Lord and just thank God you're free. Yeah. Amen. We keep looking for excuses. Let's, have, let's be real. We look for excuses to fail. And when you do that, you will become discouraged and depressed. What you need to be doing is what God said do. Well, I don't feel like going to church anymore. Get your back in out of that bed and get to church. But I don't feel like it. It don't matter what you feel like. Go get you that scripture that says, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house. Well, I'm not real glad. Well, quite, well, that's what you think faith is about. It's about changing your circumstances by declaring what God's Word says about your circumstances, even if you don't like how it feels about those circumstances. When you get up and say, your body goes, you don't want to go to church. Pastor Ed's mean. He's going to talk about people this morning who go to psychologists. There's no such thing as spiritual healing anyway. Your spirit gets born again, your mind gets renewed, and your body gets healed. Yeah. Hello. I said, hello. You know, spiritual healing came out, a lot of that stuff came out of the 70s and 80s. We started, getting, we started mixing all that psychology in and trying to use psychological techniques with the Bible and diagnosing it with psychological terms and then trying to get people to get healed. And use all the same techniques, and they'd throw a little Bible in here and there to make it Christian. <clears throat> Folks, if, you are dis if you're dealing with discouragement, here's the word of the Lord. Go return. Mm -hmm. 
God didn't sit here, and God didn't, look, did you notice God didn't go, bless your heart. The things that people demand of the ministers today are things that God didn't do. God didn't go, bless your heart, Elijah. Ble oh, yeah, you have done exactly what I asked. Bless, buddy, I'm telling you, I don't blame you. Look, you want to come on home now? Come on. Because I, I, I fully understand what you're going through there. Is that what he said to him? Did he go, you know, uh, it's, been too, it's, it's really my fault, Elijah. I put too much on you. I put more than you could handle. And, and it's just not fair to you that I did that to you. So, look, you know, I, uh, I'm going to give you a pass on this. Come on home. Is that what he did? Did he say you need to go talk to Dr. Ruth? <laughs> or, or Phil? Didn't send him to either one of them, did he? Didn't put, her on, didn't put him on the Oprah show? Hello? Where people, where, where people don't even know what to talk about come and counsel you. Who don't even know how to counsel, and don't even know what counseling is, and they're going to give you, I think you ought to do such and such. Dear Abby, I mean, that's, that's something, that's, you know, dear Abby and, and dear Abigail, those are two people you shouldn't be listening to. Of course, you can't read dear Abby anymore. She's dead. But her sister's still out there somewhere. God didn't do that, did he? What did God do? Get back to work. One of the best things you can do to overcome discouragement is get back to doing what you know you're supposed to do. I don't want to. There's your problem. You want to be depressed. You want to be down and out. And God's not going to allow it. Are you here? So he says, go return on the way to, on, on, on the, way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael, uh, Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphath of Abel Meholah, uh, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Go, go anoint the two next kings and anoint your replacement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you wonder why he was so harsh on Elisha. He had to anoint the guy taking his place. Yeah. All right. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass, him that escaped the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet, listen, remember what Elijah said? I'm the only one left. I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bailed, bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. You got wrong information. Now get back to work. You got wrong information. I'm still God. You go work for me. You do what I said. It doesn't, basically, here's the thing. It does, he didn't even address Jezebel because it doesn't matter what Jezebel said. You go do what I said do. Yeah. And God doesn't change. Remember when Peter, um, <coughs> Peter and, and John were all around, and, and John's laying his head on Jesus' chest, and uh, Peter, you know he's giving all his instructions about Peter. You know you're going to die. You're going to. And he goes, "Well, what about him?" Remember that, referring to John. And Jesus says, "What is it to you if it's my will for him to stay until I come back? You feed my sheep." Now, people would around start saying, you know, that, that John was going to live until Jesus came back. <coughs> I had somebody who believed that. I knew somebody who believed that. But the Bible said, even, even John says that it was rumored about that he would, that he would live until Jesus came back, which was not, he even said it's not true. You go read the study out, that's what he says. Hello. And so, he says, get back to work, boy. Go anoint the next two kings and anoint your replacement. Hello. And your information's wrong. I got 7,000 that bowed their knee. So he departed thence and, th and, and found Elisha, the son of Shapheth, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And, he, and, and um, he cast his mantle upon him. He left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back, for what have I done to thee? <laughs> he, did, he never treats him real good. I mean, even the day he's getting taken up, he said, what have I got to do with you? He said, I want, I want a double portion of you. He said, he said, I'm going over here. You stay here. No, I, I'm going with you. He gets there. I'm going over here. You say, no, I'm going with you. I mean, he just keeps trying to get rid of the boy all day long. Yeah. Are you here? And um, he returned back from him, took a yoke of oxen, slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, gave them to the people they did eat. And then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So we're dealing with here a discouraged, depressed servant. 
And God's word to the discouraged is get back to work. Your discouragement is flawed. It's based on flawed information. Your discouragement comes from God did it in the past, but I don't think he's going to do it again. Because there's nobody else but me. I'm the only one's doing it right. I'm the, you know. See, that's pride. Pride goes before destruction, the Holy Spirit before a fall. You get yourself in all kinds of trouble. God says, hey, I got 7,000 of them bow their knee. And I've got somebody in the wings waiting to take your place. Who are they? I'm going to get them. He ain't taking my place. All right. Are you here? What do we do about this? How do we fix this? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. You're going to have to go back and rehearse like we said there. The angel came and touched him and said, rise, eat, and drink. Yeah. Twice he did that because the journey's too, too, too strong for them. You're going to have to get back to a regular routine of being what you used to be. Hello? Well, I don't like that. That's work. I want to be, I just want to, I want to live under grace. I want to lay on my potato couch and be a couch potato, look up at heaven and say, look at the finished work of Jesus and get my blessing and get my prosperity and get all this. And I don't have to do anything. You didn't do it that way in the past. I said it didn't work that way in the past, did it? Did it? Did it? We're at, you know, it, it amazes me how we think, you know, how we think we can start out one way and then change course somewhere down the middle of the road and everything worked like it did before. Well, I used to confess the Word and speak the Word and go to church all the time. You need to be in church all the time. Every chance you can get. And whatever, it make, whatever it takes to get there. Why? Because there are things there by the Spirit. You're going to have a service. How many of you ever heard this? You, you said, man, I'm not going tonight. And you don't go. And you come back next Sunday morning. Man, you missed it. How many of you ever experienced Now, look, I've experienced that. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever had that happen to you. Yeah. Man, I missed it. You missed it. I'm telling you, Pastor Ed started ministering by the Holy Ghost. People were falling all over the place. The Spirit of God was anointing them. Words from heaven were coming. People were getting set free. I'm telling you, all kinds of stuff was happening. And you're sitting there going, man, all I did was lay in the bed and sleep and worry and whine about how tough things were. You missed your answer. We have an old saying. There's an old Pentecostal saying. I grew up classical Pentecostal. We had an old saying. You got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. That simply means you need to be in the right place at the right time. Now, God, yes, God can minister to you at home. But I'm telling you, he has set apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to perfect the saints. The church is a place where God uses for saint perfection. And the more you draw, the more it'll flow. And the more you expect, the more it'll flow. And the more you make a demand, the more the, the stronger the flow will be. Amen. So what are you going to do? We're going to have to get back to doing the things that we, the way we used to do them. Amen. Psalm 42, one says, or Psalm 42, As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Man, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to our heart panting after God. Somebody say amen. amen. My soul thirsteth for thee, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat and my day and night while they continually say to me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise and with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquietened in me? These are, these, are talk, these are just terms of depression and discouragement. This is, this is the response. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let me say something. I'm going to talk to every single one of you in this room. I'll guarantee you there was a time in your life when discouragement tried to come. You said, no, my God is faithful. My God is my hope. My God is my answer. But you've had some experiences. You've had some tough places. You've had some stuff happen where it just didn't look like. I'm going to tell you something. Last year for us, there were some times, I, I mean, it's like, where's God? I mean, you, you didn't really mean it, but you're, you're, you're thinking, 
I'm, I mean, I need miracles. And then I look and find out, well, you had miracles. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you see, you can get in the middle of it and can't even see it happening. That's so true. That's so true. You can get in the middle of something and can't even see that God is sustaining you. Yeah, yeah. Be careful, right? Ooh. You can get right smack dab in the middle of it and you can't see the trees for the forest of problems and God is holding you steady right in the middle of it. I like what Dad Hagen used to say. He'd say, I'd, I'd stand before the Lord and I'd say, I, live or die, sink or swim, go over, go under. We're going to continue doing this. And he said, it looked like we were going to do all of them. Yeah. <laughs> live, die, sink, swim, go over and under. But I want to make a proclamation to you this morning. We're the head, not the tail. Amen. We're above only and not beneath. Amen. Our God, he is God. Amen. He is the faithful God, which keepeth covenants to a thousand generations. <clears throat> if you just take a low end on generations of 44 years, that's 44,000 years. We, we, we're, 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 anyway, yeah. we got a lot more left. Hello? He keepeth covenant. I am, listen, listen, this is the promise of God. I am the Lord, and I change every two seconds. And I change not. And that's what Elijah forgot. That the God who calls him to win in that situation was the same God that was going to sustain him and see him through anything that Jezebel said. Are you here? And he would have his vengeance on Jezebel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh my God, verse 6. My soul is cast down within me. <laughs> I've never been there. Therefore will I remember thee. Ooh, here's an answer. My soul is cast down. But what are you going to do? I will remember thee. Whew. Glory to God. Are you here? From the hill of Mizar, I mean, from, I'm sorry, from the land of Jordan and of the Hemorites and of the hill of Mizar, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spout, all thy ways and all thy billows, and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer will be, shall be with the God of my life. And I will say unto, the God, unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the sword in my bones, my enemy reproached me while thou art so daily with me. Where is God? I'm telling you, these are the things you start asking. How many of you know what I'm talking about? These are things that when you're in the middle of something, you're, you, I mean, your soul, this is not your spirit, your soul wants to cry out out of anguish. But why not? Listen, because he, he asks his soul. And he, he says this, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquiet within me? Answer again, hope thou in God. Now, what are you going to do? For I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be some times you're just going to get up and start shouting. I don't feel like shouting. See, listen, it's easy to shout when you feel the shout. It's easy to shout. Hallelujah. When we're singing, you know, the blood-bought church. When we're singing, God rides on the water. God rides on the flood. And there ain't no power from hell that's going to stop God's wings of love. I feel the winds of mercy. Oh, yeah, we can get, woo, yeah, go, 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 Got the right song going. I like, now listen, let me be real honest with you. I love those songs. Because they move us to a place we can enter into some things. Now, they're great stuff. They're awesome. Somebody caught, somebody heard somebody referring, telling me that somebody told him they were shout songs. He said, you mean the songs that you sing at Dad Hagen's meetings that moved the people and the Holy Ghost moved and they got set free and their lives were changed? You're calling them shout songs? Oh, they started backpedaling. <laughs> yeah, he said, let me ever hear call that again. There's something about that kind, that, that, those songs that are anointed that move people. Well, I thank God for those. I'm ready to go with it myself. But I'm going to tell you, what if you don't have the music, you don't have that to get, you're just going to have to get up and shout anyway. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Amen. You're going to have to shout anyway. I'm telling you. But I don't feel like shouting. Well, shout anyway. I had somebody used to tell me all the time. They were they, in the church and they'd say, well, I'll dance if God makes me dance. Well, you want to ever dance? I'll run if God makes me run. Uh, wrong. If you'll go study the Bible, when the prophet told the guy, said, go look and see what you see. And he came back and said, I see, the, I see a cloud the size of a hand's man. He said, he said, hurry up, get your chariot ready and get back, get back. Because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And the Bible says he took and, and, and gir, gir, took up his skirt. I mean, you know, because they wore robes and began to run. He began to run. I said, he began to run. And then the Bible says this, and the hand of the Lord came on him, and he did outrun the king's chariot. He didn't get the hand on the Lord on him until he took off. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Some of you have not been taken off enough to get the hand of the Lord on you. Come on now. Amen. Some of you have been sitting around waiting for Pastor Ed to preach a powerful sermon that's going to set me free. Hallelujah. He's going to have a word from heaven today that's going to be an anointed head. Come on now. I like to preach like the best of them. I love the preaching anointing. But I'm telling you, folks, you're going to have to learn to run, and you're going to have to learn to shout, and you're going to have to get with the program, even when you're discouraged and depressed and down and out. And so why? Because then the hand of the Lord can come on you. Yeah. Yeah. You're waiting for it to come on you and make you do something. Yeah. God never makes you do something. He only cooperates with what you're doing. Now, that's, that, that, may, that could be taken wrong. When you are responding out of faith towards him, then his anointing comes on you to cooperate with you responding towards him. That's what I mean. I didn't mean anything else. That's what I meant. Somebody hear that on the, oh, and they'll, they'll come write some stupid Mickey Mouse letter. <laughs> and that's not what I meant. In other words, God doesn't make you do stuff. When you're sitting there discouraged, he just asks you questions. What are you doing here? Hello? What are you doing here? <laughs> kind of like those, those cartoons where the, the, the humans speak, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> you don't even know what they're saying. No, 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 no. I, I, sometimes I wonder if that's how it sounds to God's ears. <laughs> and when you finally shut up, he has something to say. Are you here? What are you doing here? <laughs> Get up. Get back to work and do what I told you to do. Now, let me say something. When Elijah went back to work, the anointing came on him. Yeah. How do you know? He went up to the river and took his mantle off and went, wham! And the, the river went hither and thither. There was anointing on him. Are you here? There was so much anointing on him that when Elisha got it, he wanted a double portion of it. He got twofold of it. Well, he only committed, he only, he only uh, did 13 miracles in the Bible. Oh, no, 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 no. Because the 14th happened after he was dead. Because they took his bones and threw them in a cave because they didn't have the time to bury him. I mean, again, they put him his bones in a, in, a, in a sepulcher. And then there was a battle a few years later. And, they, and the key, people come by. The young man got killed. They took up, threw him in the thing because they didn't have time to bury him. He rolled up against the bones got raised from the dead. Yep. Now, don't you know the guys that threw him in there became track stars? Because <laughs> when he came out of that cave, I go, wait, guys, wait. Boy, can't you imagine how fast they took off? Yeah. <laughs> It's a hate. It's a hate. Oh, God. They're gone, baby. <laughs> they ain't hanging around here for this. No. <clears throat> Why art thou cast down on my soul? Hope thou in God. Your answer to discouragement is put your hope back in God. And I'm going to make a strong statement right here. Because people will say this. God has not let you down. God has not been late. God hasn't been missing in action. Are you here? You're not wanting to put your hope back in because you're afraid he won't show up. 
And you've got to get your hope back in God. And you've got to get back to praising God. And like, let the angel touch your, your, your side, as it were. And go eat heavenly food again until you're ready for the journey. And I can tell you this. You'll hear from heaven. I said, you'll hear from heaven. And God will speak. But you're going to have to make some adjustments. Mm. Hello? Covers over your head ain't going to cut it. Fussing about somebody else ain't going to cut it. Whining to everybody you see ain't going to cut it. Hello? You're going to have to get back. You're going to have to get back in the program. Amen? You're going to have to get back to where you run like the wind. I remember the movie back in the, uh, I guess, late 70s, early 80s, Chariots of Fire. You know, and Eric Little's running the race, and the guy comes up on the inside track and just knocks him to the ground. Now, today they've been disqualified, but you know, this is, they didn't have instant replay, they, you know, whatever. I guess it was just a bruising sport for track. And uh, he's there, he's way behind. He gets up and begins, he, he gets up and begins to run. So you can get knocked down. Paul said, I have been knocked down, but not knocked out. Hello? Now, last night we watched on um, uh, the, the uh, featherweights on yeah, UFC or Fox. Those little guys, man, they are mean and nasty. I don't know if I want to fight them. They're five foot three and, and 125 pounds. And, um, but, but the guy that lost, and now listen to this, the guy that lost knocked the guy down that won at least four times. I mean, knocked him down. I mean, boom, pow. That guy kept getting back up. Now, the guy that got knocked down four times had more than 100 strikes more than the guy who, who knocked him down. He kept waiting to knock him out. And the devil, hello? The devil may make you think he's knocked you down and out. You've just been knocked down. You're not knocked out. You get back up. And you keep wielding the sword of the Spirit, praise God. And you keep speaking the Word of God. You put your hope back in God. Don't put your hope in anything else. Put your hope in God. You put your hope and your trust in the Almighty that He's going to bring you out of that circumstance. Yeah, but Pastor Ed, I did some things that got me here. Repent! Then put your hope in God. Say, Lord, I made a mess of this. I didn't do this right. I handled this wrong. Forgive me. He'll forgive you. And now, put your hope in God. Oh, you hear you're going home. I am telling you, he's the God of mercy. Richard Roberts used to preach, he's the God of the second chance. I got news for you, he's the God of the third chance and the fourth chance and the fifth chance. Hallelujah. How many times you come in and say, Lord, I was wrong. I made a mistake. Forgive me. He'll wash you clean and just put your hope back in God. Get, listen, well, I've got to put hope in God because faith is the substance of things hoped for. You can have all the faith in the world. Now, if you're not hoping, you don't have anything for it to get substance to. Amen. If you've lost your hope, you can have great faith. Well, what's it going to get substance to if you have no hope? Yeah. If you've lost your hope. Loss of hope is discouragement, despair. I like, now some of you, you probably won't believe I watched this. My, I had girls. And so we watched things like Anne of Avonlea and Anne of Green Gables. Four hours to see a kiss. <laughs> I mean, you know, too many series. And she finally kisses the guy and agrees to marry him. Anyway. <laughs> but I remember back in the very beginning when she first got adopted by Marilla. And uh, she's in the room and she had tried to get her hair dyed. And it was horrible. He, he said it would be a lovely raven black. And her hair is green, you know. She hated her red hair. And you, if you know any of the Ann stuff, you, it was all about her red hair. And... Uh, she says, I'm in the depths of despair. And Marilla looks at her and says, to despair is to turn your back on God. Wow. How can, how, I was figuring out, trying to figure out how you go make a spiritual lesson out of Anne. <laughs> to despair is to turn your back on God. What do you mean? See, when you don't have any hope, you've turned your back on God as your answer. You're looking to some other means to get your situation fixed instead of putting your trust and your hope in God. You're wanting somebody else to come through. Honey, there's nobody else to come through. There's nobody big enough to fix your mess. 
But God is God. And he don't ever change. Amen? Are you here? God is God. Thank you. Amen. And so the, the psalmist asked all his rhetorical questions, and then he answered with one statement. Put your hope in God. Where's God? Why aren't you here? Why hadn't this happened? Why hadn't that happened? Answer! Put your hope in God. But I just asked, where is God? Put your hope in God. But, 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 stop button. You goat. <laughs> Be a lamb. Yes. Yes. Hello? That's a little corny, but you get it. Yeah. We're the hee haw church. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. I still haven't got my copy of my DVD. Working. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Hallelujah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Maybe I'll get it sooner. <laughs> what was that? It's online. It's online. <laughs> so I guess if I download it, I can print off my own DVD. Yeah. Okay. I guess that works for me. All right. Get your get quit being just quit 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 quit, quit the despair. Quit the discouragement. Quit the depression. Hope, vow in God. Listen to what it says. For I will let yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. When you start putting your hope in God and praising him again, it will change your countenance. So it will change your countenance. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you that we have shared during this teaching what you had put on our hearts to share. This message came from heaven for this church, for those in this church. And I believe that there is transformation taking place in people's lives. Some may be still sitting here today going, oh, I just wish it were true. I wish it would work. And the Lord says, put your hope in me. Put your hope once again in me. Let go, listen, release the fear and step out in faith and put your hope in God. Put your trust in God. And let God restore and renew you in your spirit, in your mind. Let the anointing of God that, dis, listen, this word has been anointed of heaven and I decree that it destroys the yoke of bondage in Jesus' name. Because you have sat under this and listened to this and received the word of the Lord. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save, sozo, restore, make whole your soul. God's doing a work in you because of this word. And there's a restoration taking place. A freedom to trust him again. A freedom, to put your, a freedom to put your hope in him again. In Jesus' name, we decree it and declare it and call it so.